Thank you, musicians. We get into the Word. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we'll go again as we have much of the time lately in Acts chapter number 2, verse number 1 through verse number 4. Then we'll go to Ephesians 5 and 18. Acts 2, 1 through 4. Both of these, if he man, he man, you've heard preach over and over and over. Anybody that's been in the Pentecostal church in at least a time probably heard these preach over and over and over. This is nothing. This is not a new. This is nothing new. It is a new message, but there ain't nothing new. Probably, it's a, a man. A truth that's been preached over and over and over, but a vital truth. Amen. Acts chapter two, verse number one through verse number four. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire that set upon each of them. And they were all, all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Ephesians 5 and 18. Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 18. So then be not drunk with wine where it is says, but be filled with the Spirit. If you would just pray with me, Lord. I thank you for bringing us here. Lord, I ask you to anoint me, Lord. Forgive give me everything that you would have me to say, God. Lord, help us, God, to be full and stay full of this, your Holy Ghost, God. Oh, God, how we need the Holy Ghost. If we're going to be that church, you would have us to be. We're going to be that church of that book of the book of Acts, God, that New Testament church you have called us to be. Oh, God, how we need Him, the Holy Ghost, God, to fill us, Lord. We love You. We praise You. Ask it all in Your name. We pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I've been preaching about the necessity of revival. Amen. Amen. How we need revival. I do believe we need Pentecost. Amen. How we need to be that church, the, the, uh, that New Testament church that they was in the book of Acts. How a Bible this truly is. Amen. We really need to see the necessity of returning back to what that, uh, what that early church truly was. We need to see the necessity of revival as they see it. How vital it truly is. This is not an option, but I do believe a necessity. This is not something that we can live without, but I do believe it's a necessity. Amen. Is what I do believe. Amen. How vital this is. Amen. But we've been talking about that, but tonight we're going to talk about, amen, the necessity of living full of the Holy Ghost. If we are to be that church that God has called us to be and to live to the fullness of what God would have us to live. Amen. I do believe it's not going to happen outside of living a life full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I do believe this, this feeling is a necessity. It's not just another option. This is not just some secondary doctrine. The doctrine of the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not some then the unnecessary secondary doctrine that we can just push aside. I do believe this is vital. Amen. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is vital. And I don't believe vital. And I don't believe it's just an option, but a command. Amen. As we've often established, the Bible tells us not be, be not drunk with wine, where it's excess but be filled with the Spirit. God commanded us to be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. He said, go tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued. Amen. Or be full of that power from on high. Amen. He commanded us to be full of this Holy Ghost. Amen. As I said, this is nothing new, but amen is a truth. Amen. Of, uh, amen a truth that has been preached for thousands of years, but in final truth, amen, that we must be full of the Holy Ghost. This is not just something that somebody on the church side that says Pentecost should believe, but I do believe this is vital, amen, and a necessity for every single Christian. 
I do believe that initial baptism of the Holy Ghost is vital. Amen. If you've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, I do believe this is a necessity that we do. Amen. We're not one to teach. If you haven't spoken tongues, you're not born again. But I do believe every born again Christian shouldn't speak in other tongues. And I don't believe you're full and even have been baptized in the Holy Ghost unless you have spoke with other tongues. Amen. But this is a vital doctrine. And this is not only die. Amen. This is not just a preaching a doctrine. But this is a something that is going to help you. Amen. It's going to help you live for Jesus. It's going to help us in our everyday life to live. Amen. To be full of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. How important it is to deliver that initial feeling. Amen. That, amen. Brother Clinton said when he got saved, amen, he went and he said, what's next? And they said, amen, you need to be full of the Holy Ghost. He just said, is it better than what I got last night? They said, no, but it's going to make what you got last night better. Amen. It is vital that we be full of this Holy yes, Ghost. Sir. Amen. But not just an initial baptism. Amen. But that everyday living full of the Holy Ghost. This is not just, amen, a one-time initial thing that we have, we get, amen, and we no longer have to be full of it. The Bible tells us in Psalms 92 and 10, a horn shall exalt thee as a horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Amen. I do believe we see New Testament, amen, a New Testament pattern of this, that we not just Get full one time, but we stay full and live a life full of the Holy Ghost. This is a necessity. If we're going to do be that church that God has called us to be, it's not going to happen outside of living that life full of the Holy Ghost. Yes, amen. amen. We must live a life full of Him. Amen. He must fully into wellness. Amen. He must have full control of our lives. We must be led by the Spirit of God at all times. This is, as I said, not just a one-time initial feeling. Amen. Our everyday prayer, our everyday prayer lives, we need to be full of this Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. If I go to Walmart, I need to be full of this Holy Ghost. When I go to work, I need to be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When I meant to enter into this church, I need to be full of the Holy Ghost. When I'm preaching, I need to be full. It is vital that we live a life yes, full of the Holy Ghost. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's not just an op. This is not an option, but a necessity that we live yes. that life yes. in such a way that we are full of the Holy Ghost. Oh. Amen. We must Amen, Lord, we must be aware of the danger of living under full. Amen, it is, it is dangerous to get to a place where we're not full. It is dangerous to get used to living that life where we're not full any longer full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm going to tell you, say, well, I got full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I, I, a long time ago. I'm going to tell you, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost as a young, uh, young boy. I don't remember exactly how old I was. I was very young in the first time. I got, amen, when I first got baptized in the Holy Ghost in Jinnerat, Louisiana, it can't be. But I can't live off of that for the rest of my life. I don't need to live off of what I got last week. Last month, last year, amen, I don't need it, I need to remain full of this Holy Ghost. It is dangerous to get to a use, amen, or get, amen, get used to that state of living a life under full of the Holy Ghost. We must, amen, we must live a life full of Him. I don't want to be used to anything but being full of Him. Yes. Amen. We must beware. Say, well, amen. I've, I've, I've not been full in so long. I'm used to the state that I'm in. That's a dangerous, dangerous yes, place. Amen. To get used to such a place. Amen. amen. We must 
Live a life full of Him, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Do you truly find it a necessity to live for the Holy Ghost every day? Amen. We must find it. Amen. A true necessity. If we really believe it was a necessity, we really believe we need this in order to live for Christ every single day. We would do whatever it takes to remain Full of Him, the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is a necessity that we be full. And we're going to talk about why it's a necessity to be full. What we need Him, the Holy Ghost, for. But I'm going to tell you, we need to find it necessary. If we're going to be that church that Jesus called us to be, it's going to be because we're a church full of the Holy Ghost. If you look in this Word of God, in the book of Acts, you, what will you see? Amen. You'll see much. But amen. Why did they do the things that they did? They was full of the Holy Ghost. That's why. And that's how they was able to do what they did. It was not through any other power but that power of Him, the Holy Ghost. We don't believe it's amen being full of the Holy Ghost. Ghost is being full of just a thing, but it is Him, the third person of the Godhead. Just as well as I need the Father, I need the Son. And just as well as I need the Son, I need Him, the Holy Ghost. We need the fullness of everything that God has for us. Amen. This is vital. This is a necessity. This is not something that is optional for us. Amen. If you've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, it should be your everyday goal that you seek God in such a way that you be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Every service, you should be seeking. In your private prayer time, you should be seeking. Amen. Every day, you should be calling out on God how I need Him, the Holy Ghost. If you've been filled, you should pray in such a way that you would be free filled and live a life every day full of Him, yes. the Holy Ghost. Yes. We must find it. It's a necessity that it truly is to be full of the Holy Ghost. If we would just live in a, a full place, a state, every single day, what could God do with us? If every one of us stayed completely stayed full to the brim of the Holy Ghost are truly overflowing. I don't believe you can ever get too much. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I want to be filled. Amen. I don't have necessarily a problem with that song, but they, that song tells us, that one song says, amen, I don't say, say it's a bad song, but amen, I, I, amen, I would I'd love to find a better word for it. The amen, where it says, fill me till I want no more. That should never be the case. I should always desire for more of Him, the Holy Ghost. I need more of Him every day. If I'm overflowing, let me overflow more. I need more of Him every single day. Yes, yes. Amen. We should live us such a life that we're full of Him. If we, amen, for if we're going to do the will of God ever, it's going to be, we, or we will need to be full of the Holy Ghost. You're not going to walk in the perfect will of God outside of being full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Bible said He will point you into all truth. He will lead us and guide us into all truth. Amen. Truly, to walk in the mind of Christ is to be full of Him, the Holy Ghost. Amen. As, I, as I, I'm going to do what God would have me to do every single day of my life. I'm going to have that mind of God. I'm going to go where He would have me to go be what He would have me to be. Preach what He would have me to preach. Amen. Young people, if you're going to marry who God would have you to marry, you need to be full of the Holy Ghost. Don't make that decision outside of being full yeah. of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, amen. amen. That is vital. Amen. If I, if I, where I'm going to decide, where you're going to decide, where you're going to work, where you decide what you're going to buy, Amen. You need Him, the Holy Ghost, to lead you in such a way. Amen. If you're going to be, if you're led of God, God by Him, the Holy Ghost, Amen. God will lead you. You will never be led astray. Please stay full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Be led by Him 
And He will lead you in the right every single time. We need Him if we're going to do the will of God. Amen. If I'm going to live in this will of God right now, Amen. If I'm going to live for God and to, uh, do the will of God in the future, and every time I've done the will of God in the past, I needed Him, the Holy Ghost, to do such. Amen. Amen. If we are to live a holy life, we, we need to be full of the Holy Ghost. For the Bible tells us to walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I don't believe it's an option as well to live a holy life. I do believe holiness without which no man shall see God. There's not a whole, there's not a such thing as a holiness in a man Christian and a carnal Christian. Every Christian is holiness. Amen. It don't take a marquee on the side to make you holiness. But I'm going to tell you, it's going, amen. If you're going to be a Christian, you're going to be holy. Amen. There's no such thing as carnal or worldly Christians. All Christians are holy. All Christians are set apart. All Christians live a life like the Lord yeah, Jesus Christ. Right there. Amen. And you need Him, the Holy Ghost, to live that holy life. People ask me, Amen. Are you, Amen, when I preach on living free from sin, are you living free from sin? Amen. By the grace of God. Amen. Will you ever sin again? If I keep my eyes on Jesus and I walk in the Spirit, I never have. And I will never as long as I'm walking in that spirit and keeping my eyes on Jesus, I'll never sin again. You can live holy and never sin again. You can live a holy, separated life. You may be tempted, but amen, through the grace of God, by Him, the Holy Ghost, you can overcome every temptation if we just stay full and live full of this Holy Ghost. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, outside of Him, the Holy Ghost, you're not going to overcome sin. If I'm walking in the flesh and not in the Spirit, I'm going to fall into sin. Brother Jerry was talking about the mercies of God and not walking into condemnation. The Bible tells us, Amen, there is therefore no condemnation for them that walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Amen. If we walk in this Spirit, we're not going to have, we don't have to walk in condemnation. We don't have to walk in sin, but we can live free from sin and live a holy life through Him, the Holy Ghost. But outside of Him, Amen. You, you're going, Amen. If you're not careful, you're going to fall. I know people, there is people that live good, clean lives. Amen. That may not have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. But I'm going to tell you, Amen. You can really look in their lives and see something missing. Amen. And I see many people fall out that's not living full of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Amen. It's really hard to live that holy life outside of that. Amen. If we are to be effective in the work of God, we need to be live a life full of the Holy Ghost. Acts 1 and 8 tells us, Amen. Amen tells us to, Amen, go, uh, tells us, uh, Amen. And I, I slipped my mind, but Amen. Before Amen, and before we go to Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and other most parts of the earth, that we need to be full. Amen. Amen. And I, Amen. I know the verse by Amen, usually by heart, but Amen, it slipped my mind. But we need Him, the Holy Ghost, to be an effective witness, to effectively do a work, to do a fulfill our calling, whatever it may be. I've seen people go out and do a work for God, preaching pulpits preach on the streets, preach amen, witness. I've seen people, but I've always seen this, that there's something missing in their ministry if they're not been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. I, amen. I, I, amen. There's, there's a few street preachers that I really appreciate that's not Pentecost. Amen. That I think that might be right with God, but I don't believe they're living. Amen. That I don't believe they're living to the fullness of what God would have them, and I do wish they would see the way of God more perfectly. But I want to tell you, as I listen to them preach, I see something missing in their preaching. Yes, and amen. There's something, if they would just be full of the Holy Ghost, what would God truly 
do in their lives. Amen. We need Him, the Holy Ghost, to work. I listen to some people preach, amen, in pulpits. Amen. They can preach very good. Amen. And really have some good things to say. And maybe, and I don't, I, I wouldn't say, amen, even walk, uh, even wrong for what they're preaching. Amen. Or anything. And probably right with God. But I'm going to tell you, there's something missing as they get up and declare God's Word. They need Him, the Holy Ghost. Yes. If I'm going to do what I'm, uh, do what God would have me to do, I know I need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, but not only that, I need to live that life yes. full yes. of Him, the Holy Ghost. Amen. If we're going to move forward in God, amen, move forward in Christ, and be more in Christ, we need Him, the Holy Ghost. As I I've often said that this Christian walk is a forward moving walk. We need to move onward. Amen. We need to move further. We need to go closer. But we're not going to do it outside of Him, the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. We're, amen. We're not going to grow as we need to grow. And amen. And we will not live a stable life if we are not living, if we're going to be stable in a way we should be. We need to be live a life full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's amen. As you see people falling out, amen. Amen. Or just up and down, up and down. You can really look at them. And you can really look at how they approach prayer time. Approach to Amen, Amen, the time of seeking God. Amen. And there you can tell this one thing is they're up and down. They're not really full yes. of Him. Yes. They might have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, but they're not living full every day yes. of that Holy Ghost. Amen. That's a necessity. One of the necessities of having a prayer life. You're not going to live full of the Holy Ghost outside of the prayer life. Amen. If we're going to pray, amen, we, we, if we're going to pray, we need to pray in such a way that we would live full of the Holy Ghost. And we're not going to be full of the Holy Ghost outside of prayer. So we need Him to be full. Amen. And I can trace back Everything to a lack of prayer, of course. But amen. You can really look back and everybody losing out on God or up and down to really this one thing. They're not really getting full of the Holy Ghost. We need Him, the Holy Ghost. Amen. If we're to live that life on fire for God, we need to be full of the Holy Ghost. And I do believe biblical Christianity is being on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you look in this Bible, you're going to find people on fire for God. Them that was greatly used by God was truly giving yes. on fire yes. and a blaze for the Lord Jesus Christ. And then why was they? Because they were full of Him, the Holy Ghost. We need Him, the Holy Ghost. I want to be that church that the books of Acts, uh, the, the, the book of Acts was. But I'm not going to do it unless if I live a life absolutely every day full of Him, the Holy Ghost. How we need the Holy Ghost every single day of our lives. That's what makes us Pentecost. Amen. We're not Pentecost because we're part of an organization. We're part of no organizations. Amen. Don't mean we don't submit to people and amen and we believe we're an island unto ourselves. No. But we're not a part of any of these big organizations, which I believe most of them for a whole has lost their way. And I can't be a part of any of these big organizations. I don't feel like I can. But I'm going to tell you, I'm Pentecost because I believe yes. in that spirit filled amen. life every day single day and we believe it by the initial physical evidence of speaking in other tongues. Yes. We don't believe anybody has been filled with the Holy Ghost that hasn't spoken tongues. If you do, amen. If you don't, if you don't agree, amen. I would love for anybody to show it in the Bible because you're not going to show me biblically that, you, that you're not going to speak in other tongues. But we believe we need Him, the Holy Ghost yes, every single yes. day of our lives. Let us stand to our feet.
Amen. Come to these altars and seek God.